Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, welcome to Pitch Talk. We are fans of football. Check out our videos on YouTube and Instagram's IGTV, including special feature segments, vlogs such as The Straight Shooting View, Coaching with JBK, Podomatic, Spotify, and other podcast platforms. Join the Pitch Talk Revolution on Twitter, Instagram, and our official website, www.pitch-talk.com. The pitch is where we eat. And the pitch is where we talk. Welcome to Coaching with JBK. Welcome, welcome. It's yours truly, your host JBK. And it's another edition of Coaching with JBK. Okay, so it's now down to the final four in the euros and this is a big one um not just for today but also for tomorrow it's not just for now it's for life because once we know who the winners are it's marked down in history it's not going to be anything that you can disparage it's going to be fact it's going to be fact come 11th of july and that's the difference between the next Three names that will go out, one who will become a runner-up, and two who will have to play a third and fourth place playoff. And on top of that, let's see what happens. We we're gonna go we're gonna go through this. So Italy, Spain. Interesting. In 2016, Italy faced Spain and basically played a way of football and a brand of football that was not necessarily familiar with the Italian fans as they're known for defensive football. They kind of played that way against those who had been playing Tiki's Taka for us for a long time. And it showed. Counter-attacking football really made made the headlines. Antonio Conte did what he needed to do. But now the, the, the roles are slightly reversed in terms of all the superstars that are at Spain have kind of basically left. Have basically left the the fold and now a new manager is in new set of players are in and as as such they don't have this the, the type of football that you're you're expecting from a spanish team between 2007 all the way up to 2018 now the ironic thing is is that it's going to be the opposite way where italy know how to play fast football however they are missing one of their key players their key player being Spinozola, who apparently broke his broke his Achilles. I'm not sure how you do it, but it sounds like it's 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 a painful injury that will keep him out for not just the tournament, but for a good while throughout the season. So good luck to him in his in his recovery. I hope he do, does well. I've had an injury similar. It's not that I've broken it, but it does hurt when you feel the pain in your heel. You, it. Basically, you don't necessarily return as as best as you want, um, and it's a it's almost an ongoing thing that you have to keep working on for the rest of your life. On top of that, putting that to the side, I had posed a question to some of the PT family, some of the Pitch Talk family, of who was who was Italy's most important player of these Euros so far, and. Nobody actually guessed it, but the ironic thing is, it's Giorgio Chiellini. Now, when he's been out of the side against Austria, they didn't have this sort of defensive structure that you normally see with the Italians so far this season, or so far this, this tournament. But when he came back, you saw that specifically against Belgium, you saw that against the three teams in the Euros, in the, the Euro groups, and it's ironic. It is ironic. And the reason why I say it's ironic is because he's part of the old guard. He's part of the team that so happened to have gone through that spell of tiki-taka football from Spain and has come out the other side in 2020 or 2021 as it is. And now is playing the way that he does in that back th in that essentially back three, possibly back four. Now, how that changes in the next few games will be interesting. And the reason being... The reason being is that you're going to see something happen that 
will be effective. Effective. The, let's see what, what Mancini really comes up with, whether he goes and sticks with another left back, but knows that that left back will not go forward. Or if he decides to change tactics in terms of formation and change the style, which is what he did against Austria. He changed the style and it really did it did kind of work in his favour. And it and it's been a, a it's been a thing with with football in this in this tournament that if something's not working in the first ten to fifteen minutes, you change the style, not the and possibly the formation, but not necessarily the players. You don't really change too much. You just want to kind of give them a little bit of information just to try and make sure that things work a little bit differently within the next 20 to 25 minutes of the of the half. On top of that, in my opinion, it could be that we go back to pen- we go to penalties. It could mean that we have a winning goal in normal time as we did with Italy and Belgium. But essentially this is going to be a massive game for for both teams. It's going to be a massive game because one or two one will get to the final and the other one will be playing um playing for basically a, a sit down position last posi- basically the last of the three positions and that's that's the reality in my opinion it could be italy it should be italy but then again we've also seen that spain haven't turned up and they've still managed to get through so i'm very close on this one but i'm going to go with italy on this one i'm going to go with italy they may just get the first goal sit back a little bit, understand what they've got to do, and then play play counter-attack in football as they can, as they can do. On top of that, on top of that, we've also got Denmark-England. Denmark-England is going to be a massive game, and as such, it's a polar opposite, especially when you look at the flags. The flags are different, or they're the same, but in different uh, directions with... The red, uh, the red cross being on the English flag and the white cross being on the red Denmark flag. So, with the way that Denmark's campaign started and where it's got to, it has been nothing short of miracles can happen and also belief within your own squad can happen. Yes, the rules have kind of helped in that sense of you just need to get one win and hope for the uh, hope for the best on on everything else but at the same time Denmark have managed to get through this whole tournament with the no- knowledge of they almost lost a player through a death through a death but thankfully he's still around Christian Eriksen and I'm hoping that he will be watching watching again at home looking forward to this match going forward with the talent that England have and possess Everybody's kind of written it as it should be England going through. However, Denmark haven't got here just by luck. They've got here because they've worked. They've worked hard. And their main challenge for this one will be how well the defence and the attack can work together. Especially through midfield. Can the midfield actually stop England from getting onto the ball a little bit more easily? And can the defence kind of close the gaps that the defence that the, uh, the midfield leave. On top of that, where can they get their shots off? Where can Denmark really get their shots off? With the fact that Maguire and Stones are quite tall, headers will probably be at a limit. So their shots may have to come from around the box rather than inside. That's, that's, the, that's the reality. And the big thing for England, which might be a disadvantage for Denmark, is that the game is at Wembley. It's at Wembley. It's going to be a massive game, um, not just for England fans, but also for the Danish fans to see how this really goes and what really comes comes forward. On top of that, let's see how, how it really goes. I would love to see if England can, can produce the kind of levels that you're expecting um, from an England team, especially this England team. They've got a lot of young talent and hopefully... With Sunday coming, you'll see that it'll be an Italy-England final. I'm not overly confident that that will be the situation, but England's two last two semi-finals have been, have been in the last two tournaments. Plus, they've had the UEFA Nations League as well. 
which also was a was a um, a semi final. So essentially, they've been in three se semi finals, and you can literally say, well, this is a good standard of English talent. Let's see how that team works together to get to the final. And if they do get to the final, what are they going to be facing, and who are they going to be facing? Spain have really Spain will really come to uh, come to the forefront at Wembley this this uh, tonight on a Tuesday. And on Wednesday, it'll be England, Denmark. So who's going to be getting to that final on Sunday? It's going to be interesting. Looking forward to having this conversation with you about the final come the end of the week. But for now, yours truly, JBK, is signing off. Come with a prediction. I'll be looking forward to hearing what you, what you think. I'm going Italy, England in the final. It could be that I'm completely wrong. Have your say. What do you think? Speak soon. Peace. Join the Pitch Talk Revolution. Check out the official Pitch Talk website. www.pitch-talk.com.